Hello and good evening to everyone or whatever time it is in your area <laughs> and today we will I guess I will begin a series all talking about animations and in here you will learn a lot about well animations as I have done and of course I'm still far from being great at it because there are a lot of um, libraries out there that is let's say efficient and uh, far more performant uh, in terms of doing it by hand you know but anyway and I would like to thank a beautiful friend of mine for telling me a this idea I guess of discussing things about animation Without further ado, let's discuss my initial setup. So I only created a a vid um, template, and I changed it now. So what I did was just npm create vid at latest. Then it will prompt you which project name, yada yada, you want, and I chose vanilla because we're going to use vanilla JavaScript, or in this case, TypeScript for me. But you can easily follow along as I am just using TypeScript for my type checking. And this can be done using JavaScript. <coughs> anyway, I will not be writing, uh, let's say, JavaScript HTML, like rendering HTML in JavaScript. And I will be writing everything in HTML so that you can follow along. <coughs> but first, let us discuss what are even animations. Or like how can we animate something in on a website? Well, it can be done pretty easily using uh, is it still working? Yeah. Using CSS. There are two ways which are the let's say transform properties, uh, opacity and whatnot. And then we can give it a transition uh, property which is a, so a shorthand for a combination of transition property transition duration, transition timing function, and whatnot, which I can actually show you here using uh, animation. There we go. It's pretty much the same as animation, but in this case, animation is much more different than uh, transition. In transition, you don't have an iteration count, a direction, and a fill mode. You only have the this but instead of a name it's a transition property which you can specify whether you want all of the properties that is applied to an element to be or to have all this other stuff like a delay a duration and whatnot but first let us let me make a simple uh, box so you can see how it works much better of box and I'll just make a style of because this is the like this is like the global uh, CSS I guess in that regard. Then just import it here. So if you don't know what I'm doing right now, I can discuss it in another video. This is pretty much just uh, modularizing stuff so that it's more readable and more maintainable when you're building real world projects. Anyway, so a classic box, a little bit of dinner, and a background color of let's say blue. But I want a good color of blue, so it's around easier. There we go. And I like Vit because it's very fast. <coughs> and what, why I'm using like a bundler, it's if you aren't quite sure why, it's because when we uh, serve or host websites on a production scale then <coughs> mm, then you would need to compile stuff like CSS, JavaScript and whatnot because as I've mentioned before is that white spaces are also included in let's say the amount of uh, file the amount of size that a specific file has and thus it will also affect um, the amount of time that a page loads or yeah performance of a website in short 
anyway first let us discuss about transition okay so let's say I don't put any transition property at all and just say transition and that can work as well so you can just say trans ms so it's like in a in, in an order we have at first transition property at second transition delay at third the timing function which is a cubic visor for sure and for cubic visors if you don't know you can actually check or make your own using this uh, website and here you can check for the like what will your transition look like and here you can see that there are all kinds of stuff that is already inbuilt in CSS, which is well, in, in, out, etc. You can see how your cubic visor uh, compares to the inbuilt ones. And it's very cool. Anyway, so you have 300 ms. So now if I specify this box to actually transform, translate x to, let's say, 50% of its current position. So what this does is pretty much move the box along the ver the horizontal axis, sorry, <coughs> of the page by 50% from its current position. So if we save that, as you can see, it moved there in exactly 300 milliseconds. Now you can actually specify this in seconds, but I prefer using milliseconds to deal with decimals because I don't really want to see decimals anymore unlike before because <laughs> it makes the code more readable when you use um, when you don't use decimal as much for me at least so say three seconds and then I change the 50% to 200 please check now there we go it takes three seconds for the box to reach 200% of its position from it uh, from its original position to now 200% of it. Now if we go back, there we go. <coughs> so what I'm doing right now is I'm hard coding the transform and that is not, well, obviously not ideal <laughs> when a website is in production mode and oh no, already hosted somewhere because your client will not hard code it for them to see an animation mode, will they? <laughs> And that is where, uh, oh, right, let me actually discuss about delays first and the timing function. Yeah. So, is in out, is in out, which very much means that we want this to go slow when it's like entering the anime, the transition of something. And we want this to go slow when it's uh, exiting it as well. So, if we check now. As you can see, it's somewhat slower when it's uh, exiting. So if I like make that very fast and just remove this, oh, oops, should be ms, 100 ms. Oh, that is not ideal. <laughs> Maybe 1,000 second. One second. There we go. As you can see, it's it's like it's uh, slinging off like a slingshot, like boom. It's slow to fast and it's slow. Somewhat like that. There we go. Let me see if I can find the right uh, milliseconds for this. There we go. Okay, that one was good. And you can just check it here anyway. So, there we go. It's in now. There's the blue one below. So, if you can just match that, I guess. Like that. Yeah. There we go. Like slow, you know, fast, and slow again. And just the same for is out go slow when it's exiting the animation it's in slow when it's entering the animation linear well it's linear <laughs> for is hmm, I'm not too sure what is so does because it's some it looks different here I think it means that when it's exiting the animation it is as out but isn't that is out Ah, so I guess like overall is like super slow, but in is out is like at the very end of the animation, like at the very the very moment that it exits. I see. Anyway, let's proceed to adding a delay. So delay pretty much is self-explanatory. So let's say we add a delay of two thousand milliseconds. But in delay, I prefer using uh, 
seconds if I'm not uh, let's say if I'm going to use let's say uh, seconds but this works as well so now one two there we go after two seconds and again one plus and two and voila all right so now we don't want a user to actually be hard coding this right then we can use what we call an animation uh, property what this does is assign an animation to an element or yeah an element so we want so if you actually check the one I gave before okay first it the one following names and give a sense there we go so the name pretty much means what name of a keyframe do we want this to have so I will discuss keyframe later on and duration uh, I've already discussed it and iteration count pretty much means how many times do you want this animation to happen and direction which direction the throw light if we because in keyframes okay I will discuss it wait and field mode do you want it to be infinite or not I'm sure there are some other things there in field mode but ah there we go infinite normal and reverse there we go right yeah so you want to go for it to go at the reverse order or not okay so let's try to have a preframes of move I guess and so there are two ways to do this we can say from or we can say 0% pretty much the starting point of the animation and of course at the starting point we want it to transform translate to its zeroth position so what translate is it is a shorthand for translate x and translate y what this does is pretty much says that the first digit will be the horizontal axis so translate x and the second digit will be the y axis but no wait am i correct let me try okay wait i forgot <laughs> ready now this for now okay so that was correct <laughs> good <laughs> and the second digit is the y-axis or the vertical axis but you can also use translate 3d if you are dealing with 3ds I guess that's the correct spelling right wait let me check let me see. yep okay so what this does pretty much take a z value which is the third digit so that's like how far away from the screen will an element be so that's like scaling something down but not really affecting its size it's like the perspective only if i'm correct so if i do it right now don't say z oh oops that's wrong one Okay, so it doesn't work because there's no perspective, which I will discuss in another video about parallax, which makes use of this, um, let's say, 3D kind of uh, plane of the uh, of CSS <laughs> of the page. There we go. But yeah, so from transform translate of let's say, zero zero. So let's say 50% of throughout the duration of the animation. So from 0 to 50%, I want it to transform, translate to 100% of its current position vertically. And then at 100%, we want this. Should we go? We want this to go transform, translate to 200%. Uh, from its original position not current but original all right because we are not really changing its position we're only translating it let's say like uh, temporarily something like that but it will always remain um in the pos original position it's in if it's relative which it is all right <coughs> So now let's try to name this move because that is the name of the keyframe 
and then for the duration let's say 1000 ms timing function uh, linear and delay of none if you don't want to set any then just remove it and the same for this and the others all right there we go and if you notice it actually uh, actually goes back to its original position because obviously the animation has finished and if we check the dev tools right here and uh, wait wait if we save <laughs> so now if I save this or refresh the page it should um, do the animation again there we go oh wait what ah okay there we go okay never mind well okay so as you can see we have an animation of play state which says that it is running and it is this is one thing to note about um, keyframes is that it is always um, running so for example if we specify an element to move to uh, should I explain this right now? I think it's getting jumbled up. Okay. Let me actually go back to the direction in film mode first so that you understand more. Anyway, so how can we actually avoid that for the element of going back to its original position? So like because this is just let's say animate it to translate of transform translate of two hundred percent to the vertical to its horizontal axis. And that's it. We don't want it to have anything else, so it will return to the original position. And to avoid that, we can just say forwards. So what this means is that we want to have the, as you can see here, final property. We want it to be maintained after it's reached the final property. So we want it to stay at this uh, at this point. So anything that you specify here will be maintained if you spec if you say that you want it to go forward so now if we say this and so there we go and again now it's not going back but if we say backwards there we go still going back but I'm not sure what it said in the instilly sense mm. oh. oh we can say forwards direction and normal you know, normal payback pretty much means well, normal and that is the default Okay, and if we say uh, reverse, then that will just be reversed. There we go. So instead of it going starting from the from keyword or from zero percent, it will start at the final destination or final property, which is transform translate of two hundred percent. And one thing to note, or if you've noticed so far, is that. The keyframes actually manipulate the properties of an element. So let's say we want this to have color, background color of red at the end. So if I save that, there we go. It goes from red to well, back to blue. And if I actually remove the, rever the reverse, and normal is the default. So there we go, that's red. Now, there we go. Again. <coughs> And there's one last thing to actually take note of, and that is the infinite. So what this does is, in, well, it's self-explanatory. So we want the animation, this animation right here, to happen infinitely. So from 0 to 100%, back to 0 to 100%, again and again. 
and there we go as you can see right there it's causing it to repeat and it's not a good sign right now <laughs> I can make this uh, you can use say uh, transforming color transforming uh, let's say text or a moving shadow some kind to do some special effects I guess and stuff <coughs> so anyway the one thing that I wanted to show you earlier is actually when an animation the animation play state is running right so let's actually do that so let's say that there's only speci there will be a specific time that this animation th this element rather that has the class of box will move to the right at some point let's say when a button is clicked so I guess that will work that will be where um, JavaScript comes in but for now we're discussing vanilla CSS and it's useful in nav bars especially on mobile when you're toggling something and yeah when you're turning on the same animation on a website nav bars as I've said uh, going to top section sec still a nav bar I guess like a pop up there we go <coughs> when handling pop ups and whatnot and I will be discussing that I guess later or in another part <coughs> for now let's do this the hard code way <laughs> so let's say an animation uh, a class name of move will have this animation property <coughs> and so when we add the class name of move here then it will move obviously and if we remove it it will not go back to its original position but what if I actually oh right this will actually refresh So what if I add the styling or the animation property uh, inline? So let's say animation. Let's do this first, and still works fine, right? And if you can see here, it's still the same, and it's running. <sighs> I think I should really introduce the top JavaScript now. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> Uh, let's do that. Mm, yeah, I think I've discussed pretty much anything here, everything here. So, yeah. Alright, uh, let's delete. Uh, let's delete this and just. Oh, so this time we're going to make enough bar. So I guess enough that CSS and import that here instead of box. So see how readable it is. So like the index, pretty much the root styles and everything that. This global is here and here is specifically for the nav bar, which is very nice in uh, maintaining stuff. Anyway, let me start making the nav bar now. Should be pretty easy, just a header, nav, and a uh, link, which have a hashtag, which will pretty much prompt the browser or page to go back to the top and an H1 of home or like okay, I guess home home icon or something <laughs> then the UL which will be um, a list of of bars I guess Let's make this hidden now, so there's no, uh, let's say, idling by anymore. Okay, type of button, ID of uh, toggle button, and the title of toggle now. And now, one more thing to note is that we can use. Uh, DOM manipulation or class name manipulations just like I said earlier to toggle knobs 
but this time we're going to use animations which has a clear uh, problem to that which I will show uh, I guess uh, I don't have a, a menu burger wait let me get one from one of my projects it's a dear note I used the cost there what did they use? Uh, you know what, let's just make our own. <laughs> so I times 2. Uh, what do you mean? Alright, oops. Step button, there we go. And below that would be a UL, which we will show. But of course, we should have a container for that. So the pass of uh, nav links. And the UL. And an ally of times three, pretty much. All right, that ally will have a child of an H tag, A tag rather. Ally times three. And there we go. This one will go to the first section. Oh no no no. Oh yeah, yeah first section because we have a hero section. This one will go to the second section. So if you don't know this, this is pretty much just navigating through each section of the page using its ID so when we click on this it will be shown in the um, URL that we are on let's say site uh, the site name and the path name and then the hash name so pretty much this the hash name and that means that the page will go to the element that has the ID of this before the hashtag And that is where the um, smooth scrolling comes in actually, which makes it a very smooth transition. Which I will show you if we, do have, if we have time, and which we probably don't, but we'll see. First section. Second section. And I think I will have everything here all in one, like a parallax and stuff, but yeah, let's go. And third section. This will be, let's say, a co uh, not a course, but a series for now we're discussing uh, vanilla stuff because I will also dis discuss different libraries that you can use for this anyway so we have everything inside there, oh wait, what? oh right, I haven't specified the color yet, oops color point, of course there we go, looking good and Let's start styling this, shall we? And what better way to do this than split your editor? <laughs> okay. So first we have the header. We want this to have a position of fixed width of 100% and Z index of 10, I guess. Padding of 1 rem and a background color of white. Maybe. 255, 245, 248, and 245, and 250. And then a box shadow, box shadow, 0, 0 0.5 rem and 0.5 rem white. I think it's the other way around. Yeah, I think it's the other way around. This should be pure white. Huh? There we go. And I should reduce this a bit and make this less uh, make this less opaque. There we go, much better. And of course, it's hurting our eyes right now, so we can see the color for this will be black. There we go. And then the nav bar for the header will have a max width. Of uh, uh, 30 gram, so this is just to centralize it, centralize it and a margin of 0 auto. Now it's at the center if we check the FTS. There we go. And then below the nav bar, we have an A tag of home. And to separate the A tag and the button and the nav links container, we can make the header nav. 
pops into this bit flex should be right down here uh, then I turn center just if I want that space between not around but between there we go and we'll do the same for the UL or the un uh, unordered list tag so I think nav nav links UL Display of flex, list style of none, uh, line items of center, it's, which is already applied, so we won't apply it. And uh, just apply content center, make it up, up, one run. And it didn't work, why is that? Nav links, not nav link, I see. There we go. And we should increase the max width as well, because it's cramped. <laughs> it's 50, there we go. Alright. And I think I should make this further away. Okay, it's too red. 1.5 and then we're going to give the A tags of that. This is kind of tedious, so I use um, SAS, but for this tutorial or discussion, I guess, I will use plain CSS. So the A will have a display of inline block. That. So we can so we're setting the display of the A tag to inline block because orig originally it's inline and inline elements cannot have let's say it's pretty much not uh, manip manipulable is that the word? It cannot be manipulated. Its dimensions cannot be manipulated rather. <coughs> oh, excuse me, wait. So let's say we want to change it to read, it will not work, or height, padding, and whatnot. So pretty much it stays there, inline. <laughs> but if it's inline block, then it's somewhat of a block, but also inline, which I'm not too sure what. I am sure about the uh, inline property and block property, though. So it's somewhat of an inline but a block. Anyway, <laughs> padding of one, but not to one rem. So now as you can see, it's actually too much, is it? Or is it just enough? Okay, I think we should increase the max width to 70 RAM really. And then 0 0.5 RAM for the vertical. There we go. Now that looks much like a nav bar. But we will not actually have this into like this. So this should be um, display flex direction of color. But anyway, let's tell the button first. So this is toggle on I'm like so a button oh, let's just specify it. So I don't really prefer to um, get selecting I elements with IDs because it is very specific, which I actually mistook as not specific before. But in this case um, it will mostly not be mutable or changeable with styles later on when you use classes and elements and it will just force you to use exclamation important which will then make your life harder when you maintain code and your project goes larger but in this case it's actually very useful the exclamation important because we want this to be applied no matter what so you know if a user prefers a reduced motion we want everything to have a 0 ms of duration in animation transition and what not. Anyway, back to the, back to the topic. We'll style the button. So we want to style the width of two RAM and a height two RAM. And a position of relative. So we are in here you will also learn how to make a a menu a menu button, I guess. <laughs> and make it actually anime. Instead of using SVGs, which is pretty hard to be honest. If you're if you just want a simple um animation of the menu to be letter X but anyway so I think that's it yeah and then the toggle button it's uh, it's I elements or it's child let's say which is letter I so this you can say direct oh wait I think that will just affect the first child oh never mind it will, it will affect all the direct children okay so if I haven't discussed what this means, this means that all the children below this element, which is button, with, a, with an ID of toggle button, all of this will be selected. <coughs> Excuse me, but not 
those that is below this direct child so this will not be affected however if we remove this then this will also be affected right here so like all the children that has this well tag name because when we're specifying a class name here <laughs> but yeah and I save that okay so we want this to have a display of inline block because the tag the tag the element tag of i is pretty much inline and does nothing in and of itself we can give it an inline of uh, display of inline block a width of 100 percent and the height of 0.2 rem so if i give that the background color of black you will see that it should work there we go now it's right there and that is a menu button and we can add one more i but i prefer using two now but yeah to make it like a menu burger but yeah <laughs> can see that it's not aligned and we can just manipulate it using a trans uh, the top property so tap of zero and left of zero and then in this case why is it not being, is it being applied uh -huh. ah the position All right i haven't specified the position yet my bad as I've said earlier, we need to specify its position to absolute. And I haven't done that yet. Anyway, there we go. And, you know, to decentralize that, we can just do a estimate. <laughs> but we'll still uh, let it stay at left of zero. But, yeah. So the top should be for the first child, I guess, the 25%. So, toggle button. I first child or uh, first child or if you're dealing with three um, tag names or more if you're like you want a burger bet burger button you can just the nth child of one which is the first child and so on so so in this case I guess we're going to use nth child I want this to have a top 25% if, if we save there we go so the one below is now the first child go for the second child I shall two five percent there we go is it centralized yes it is okay wow it's looking great <laughs> okay, okay and then I want to give this a border ages so one RAM I guess did it was it applied I don't know It's not visible because of its small uh, height, but oh well. Oh no. Let's deal with JavaScript. Alright, I want to animate the eyes, make it look more modern. <laughs> anyway, so when the toggle button is hovered over, we want the eye, the first child of eye, to actually animate of its uh, vertical position by negative 10% so what negative does is basically opposite of something so in this case translate y uh, transforms a property or moves uh, an element rather not a property uh, moves a prop an element uh, down based by based on the amount of specified 20 pixels 20 ram whatnot and anyway, when we hop over the toggle button, we want the second child, I guess, to transform, translate Y by 10%. So now if we hover, there we go, it's transforming. But I think that's not what we want, is it? Let me try that again. I think using transform is bad here. Yeah. Why is it like showing some kind of shadow? Is it showing or am I just think, imagining things? Everything's just a little bit. Oh, never mind. I'm, I was just imagining things. <laughs> anyway, so to make this more elegant, we can just say transition all uh, trended MS and then I'm going to use a cubic visor because I want this to look pretty cool. Oops.
uh, let's say that uh, I wanted to slow down a bit and then go slow at the end I'm gonna try this I'm gonna just copy it then there we go eh, it's pretty bad should do it quick Maybe a little bit. Uh, okay, I think that's just easy now. <laughs> what the hell, bro? I like that. Okay, like that. There you go, much better. And yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, rather. Okay. Then time for some JavaScript, I guess. And this is the first thing about uh, animations, I guess. <laughs> Controlling animations. So let's go. And the first thing that we need to do is pretty much gather all the things that we will need. And the first thing will be the button. So const toggle button. So either get element by ID or pre selector. Let's get element by ID, just toggle this button, and the nav menu equal to command that query selector. Or we can also specify an ID here, but I guess we can use query selector by. So in query selector, it's pretty much, uh, let's say, a CSS selector. So if you want to select an ID, you need to have an hashtag, just like in the one we have with um, navigations right in here first section second section and whatnot and if you want to get a name or a, an element name you can just say ally but that will like, get everything or in this case only one and that is the very first one that it, the selector encounters which is this right here this is the very first um, ally tag of course you can also use ants child and whatnot here but i don't really see the use here <laughs> but yeah in this case we want to have to get enough links container so first let's add an event listener so I've already discussed the um, the ways that you can actually manipulate the button right so yeah but in this case I just want to give it an event listener of two. and uh, so function toggle now there we go and we don't need to pass on the e parameter here which is pretty much the event because sometimes when we say um, e or the element that triggered this event uh, sometimes goes for the child because well you can click on the child can't you <laughs> so yeah this is more uh, reliable right here or in React, you can just specify the ID itself, which is pretty much doing the same thing uh, here. Or like a reference to that element. But anyway, so when we click <coughs> on the button, we, we will check first if the toggle button. So this is more like accessibility and animations at the same time. So we will get the attribute because we will assign an attribute to the button of whether it's been expanded or not so already expanded means pretty much means that if a button already expanded the element or like opened the element that it is responsible to and for our in our case toggle button is responsible for nav menu so let me actually tell you that as well so we can give this an id of nav links container because that is what we need and in here we can say that area controls area controls so this button controls what the element with an id of nav links container and we can also give it a label and what is this button for well toggle navigation bar and then the area expanded which we can pretty much leave blank but i guess we can put it here 
because we, we we can as we will assign it in JavaScript anyway. But yeah, let's just set it to false, I guess. <coughs> so um, get attribute means is that we will find the attribute of this element that is equal to this, which is inside the parentheses. So the attribute of already expanded. So now the value of this. So if you sign an let's say const attribute value, I guess are you expanded as expanded rather. There we go. So the value of this variable will now be equal to a string which is the value of this attribute. Or null or undefined because we can see here that <laughs> it's each it's either null or an element because it's not sure whether this element exists or not. Oh yeah, oh yeah here. Anyway, so if has expanded is equal to true, then we want to close the nav menu. So nav menu. So there are ways you can do this. But I have, I know two. <laughs> anyway, the first one is manipulating the class name of the element, and the other is assigning attributes to it. And I find assigning attributes much more uh, easier, I guess, for me, because you can have like data active and it's more readable in that way. So is it active? False. If not, uh, true. If not, false. But in this case, I will show you how to manipulate classes as well. So there are two ways. You can say class name. Or class list and class name you can say equal to hello and this will pretty much change the class name okay wait what's this ah so one way to avoid this because we're in TypeScript is pretty much just say if not menu exists so I guess I'll do that so you don't need to do this in JavaScript but I guess it's just a way to save uh, like a safety so in case you mistyped something here and then that means that the animation will not work if you specify an if statement here because this will return null if you uh, type something wrong here or in the HTML itself then you can double check it and yeah and you can now remove this there we go it's one way I get around JavaScript, um, TypeScript, but this looks pretty bad. Guess double if statements. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so this is so this method is bad as well. But you can specify. Okay, first let me explain why this is bad. So when the map menu that class name pretty much gets the class name itself, and if we say that we want the class name to be hello, that means it will remove all its other class names so like the now next container class name so let's say that I actually uh, first make this true so save that so there we go and save this so if I click uh, okay so if I click on this watch this watch the class name of the div right here there we go, it become it became hello, which is not ideal. And as you can see the styles have been removed as well. So I'm gonna refresh and go back. I'm actually change the dev tools. I dock the dev tools to below. There we go. So we don't have to minimize or uh, make the browser smaller. Anyway, let me drink some water first. And one way to avoid this is pretty much say that we want to add hello and add a space as well because if we just say hello without a space then uh, you can check whether or not there we go there we go it's so it's pretty much think of this as like you're getting the main, the all the class name itself. Like this is like this, and then all the contents inside of this. So follow the cursor, cursor. <laughs> so all of this, and if you add a space, it'll be like that. So think of this as like say const string equals 
Hello. Plus. So it's like concatin conca concatenation, I guess. <laughs> Hello, hi. Hello, John. So just like in basic JavaScript tutorials and free console.log string whenever we toggle the nav bar. I don't see it's, it has no space, but if we add space here, then there's a uh, hello John. So we can't really manipulate the class name itself inside here, right? We, we can't add the space here. <laughs> well, so, but I guess we can say that and like add an empty space here. So, uh, class. so we can do that, which is guess viable <laughs> but it is not well it's uh, I say I don't like it <laughs> so but yeah we can do this I guess do this and then you know, click and as you can see the problem as well is duplicating and besides we're actually getting the attribute but okay let's say we want to do the method of the class name, okay? How do you want to do that? So I will just leave this here. Const class name equals class equals. Can I can I use this? I'll see. Uh, now class equals the menu that class name. So if nav class contains hmm because actually I haven't really been using the class name method yet, not method at moment. Hmm. Yeah. And this is not really accessibility rich, this method. And so, one thing is we can use the attribute as well, and so that we can check it and manipulate it, but just like doubling the, the size of your file. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I'll just show you. I'll just show it to you, I guess. So it has expanded that get attribute. It has expanded. Oh, oh that get attribute uh, area expanded equals false and to add the add of pressing open else. Oh, never mind. Oops, okay, I'm getting tired, aren't I? I want to remove class name of it. Will this work? I'm not too sure. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. Like that. See? <laughs> hmm, so I can remove this. I guess. Oh. No, see the problem? <laughs> so I guess we can have it equal to its original class name which is um, oh my god I'm dreading this already <laughs> anyway so now we'll see that this works oh wait what's the problem it was false we add open why is why is it oh that's why Oops. should be false because this right here it still hasn't been opened right now it is but anyway there I go. so now if we check it I go open oh what ah okay one thing I forgot is well <laughs> we need to set the attribute of a re-expanded equal to true so this is how you set the attribute of something first what the attribute so the first parameter of this function, I guess, of set attribute, 
is the attribute that you want to add and the second one will be its value then we have toggle button the set attribute it equals to false so now this should work there we go oh, so open there we go and if you notice it's not the style is not applied anymore <laughs> <laughs> and that is one of the problem here as well but anyway because the styles is actually loaded on uh, no, uh, on load and it's not dynamic well it can be dynamic but yeah see because we are changing like the whole class again and again so it's like Oh uh, wait. So it's like we only have this and, and but then it's getting removed when we uh actually set this equal to its original one. So in here we're just adding something to it, but in here we're actually uh I say imperatively commanding it to be in this value like that. So that means that its old value is removed. So yeah. Although I'm not sure why that why that affects the styling, because so let's say we have an open right, so open. Go refresh. Go refresh. And when the colors are red, colors are black, red, black. So we can see that the second class name, the style of the second class name is actually applied, unlike the first one. So in that regard. I'm not too sure. Did they typo something? Tangle is container. Tangle is container. I guess I didn't. But what if I actually say that equals links open? Oh, never mind. It's because I added a period. Oh. So it wasn't an issue. Okay, that's my bad then. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. There we go. Oh, goodness me. I really haven't been using this method. Huh? <laughs> but anyway, it's kind of tedious as you can see. Like two of this. And we also need to manipulate this so yeah and the other thing is classless so this one is much easier goodness and much more readable I guess in that regard because this one is like oh I need to keep track of all this class thing and that's a turn off right <laughs> you need to keep track of things when you're coding no 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 I just want to type things I just want to add new things <laughs> anyway so it's a class list Right, so this pretty much gets a list of the classes. There we go, manipulation. And this has other, a lot of properties. We have add, we have toggle, and we have contains as well, and remove. So let's say we want to console.log. Wait. So we want to console.log whether the um, toggle button has. The class list of toggle button contains. Well, let's try and have links. Links container. So this one is much more readable and easier to handle than the class name method using class list. So, so now if we check the console, it's. Oh wait. Did I type it? Um, yeah, I did. Oh no, I didn't. Class list contains nav links container. Why is it false? Goodness, what? Is it because it's the very first class? Okay, let me add something there. This is confusing me hello 
Why is it still false? Goodness. Fair space. What? What happened to class list? <laughs> am I doing it wrong or what? I definitely am. Wait, I should really search that up. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. And I know what it is, but why is it returning false? Let me see. So my class right here. class so it's correct but it's not getting it oh 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 my oh my my eyes <laughs> I should be in a menu oh my god oh my goodness <laughs> pardon me <laughs> so now it should work goodness there there we go, it's not working because we had the sp we added the space here. Ah <sighs> okay, okay. Good. <laughs> so as you can see it's actually working and yeah. It's just me and my goofiness. I guess idiocracy. <laughs> there we go. And let's see here is to So now you can see I guess how oh, this can be of use so we can say here instead of the attribute which is not accessible accessibility friendly but let's do it anyway so if the nav menu if the class list of nav menu uh, contains the class list of class list of let's say uh, slide left because we're going to of uh, going to fix this to the uh, right side of the nav bar or the page but anyway if it contains slides left then we want to remove it the class name of slide the class name of slide left we want to remove it else if it's if it doesn't contain it then we just want to add the class name itself left so now oh that is there we go so now if you check that as you can see it's working fabulously actually and no no hassle at all but yeah the problem lies with accessibility and that's why I use this method but now it's actually working so for now let's do this method or hmm Eh, you know what let's do the accessible friendly one okay so let's go back to where we were and now you know that that contains for the class list is pretty much going to find the class name that you specify here and it returns whether it's true or not if it contains uh, that class and you can have that remove if you want to remove it and add if you want to add something like a new class that regard instead of using the uh, that class name uh, method which is pretty much uh, difficult I guess to maintain for me at least to write because you need to keep track of stuff but yeah anyway let's do the accessibility friend so if fast expanded this equals to false then we want to get the toggle button to set its attribute to area expanded true because it is now open but before that we want to set the so this one I guess I can use class list 
want to add a class list to that menu of slide left. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, I'll just use set attribute. Uh, set attribute. Oh, oops. I will set attribute to so data active. So this is like readable in the uh, the dev tools and whatnot. To true. Unlike in using class names, it's like <laughs> when you have a lot of class names for an element, it just gets uh, bumped. Is it called bumped? I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> and if has expanded is equal to true, then that menu has set attribute. So it's rush doing the opposite and set false and the toggle button operate expanded also to pause. So now, if you check that, it's pretty much done or finished. There we go, you can see the data active and the array expanded doing its work fabulously. Okay, so now in here we're going to use the animations or the keyframes, which has a terrible problem. <laughs> Alright. So since we don't want to infinitely repeat this, right? Anyway. So we'll get the Navlex container. And it's okay, wait, let me style it let me style it first, I, I guess. Okay, let's style it first. So we want to position it as fixed. We want to have to it to have a width of clamp. So if you don't know what clamp is, I can discuss it in a new video. So then I guess for RAM 80% of the viewport. And then a max fit of 40 RAM. A background color of white and I want that to actually do be here okay and I want it hmm yeah. so I wanted to have a buffer filter so just me making some kind of a glass morphism effect and you can like skip through this but yeah. One, uh, so there's uh, like a better way to use backdrop filter because this sometimes uh, cause performance issues, especially on Safari. But I'll just make it like this. Oh, oops. There we go. And then I wanted to have a top of zero and to the right. So pretty much specifying right or left zero. Pretty much which posi which direction or position do you want this knob bar to be? Or this uh, doublings container to be? Do you want it to be at the right? Then specify it right zero. Or do you want it to be at the left? And specify it to be at left zero. Well, in this case, I want it to be at the right, so right zero. Oh, additionally, I need to set specify the height to uh, one hundred percent of the viewport. So pretty much just say one hundred vh. And if we actually do that and save this, you can see it's fabulous it's right there now <laughs> and I think it's too big so I'll just set it to 25 RAM there we go uh, okay excuse me and I want the button to actually have a Z index of uh, let's say 14, this one will have a Z index of 13. There we go, and then I'll try to cover that. Okay, good. No, it's not practical <laughs> and all, and you can just have uh, another button here inside the Nublix container itself, but we're animating this, so why not make it like that? 
but let me show you the uh, website that I've actually been working on and I like the I like the enough bar to be that to have that kind of animation so and this is my website and it's still being developed but let me just show you as you can see it's got the same stuff <laughs> pretty much the latest thing I've discovered and I used Astro for this but yeah let's talk about it and there we go See, something like that so this is what we're going to do with the uh, menu button that's pretty elegant if you ask me anyway let's go back to here so now some kind of a glass morphism effect and then we need to give this a padding right yeah padding I guess there we go and now we can get this ul so Oh, never mind. We, have, we already got it here. We just need to specify it right here. So line item center, face direction of color. There we go. And we want to have it the margin of through RAM, I guess. Through RAM helps. Through RAM, and you got to be less than that now. There we go, and we want to specify the font height, font size as well. So say one point five one. Hmm. Okay, I guess we can display this to create some. Let's just place the item to the center instead of assigning the uh, margin. Oops. There we go. Okay, I don't like how this looks, <laughs> but I guess we can do with it. Wait, let's fix change color to Y. Would be better? Oh yeah, it does. It does look better now. Okay, there we go. And let's make this smaller. Actually, you know. There we go. So just a simple one, and it looks pretty ugly, but you know, we'll deal with it. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So we want this to have an animation. So the Dublin container with the data active. So this is how you get uh, elements with a specific attribute. It's pretty much the same image in JavaScript you get the so in query selector, right? So you get the brackets first, and then the attribute itself. But in this case, in CSS, we're, spe we're specifying which attribute exactly. So including its value, so equals to true. And if it's a data active equals to true, we want the animation to be slide left, because well, we want it to be gone in here, and we want to slide it, you know, for some folio, I don't know. And it's out, it's in out, I guess. I can specify it with cubic, cubic visor, but for now, let's make it like this. And four words, of course. We want it to stay like that. Okay. Then we can specify it here. So, we want some cool U effect as well. So, we're going to add opacity from opacity of one. Oh, never mind. From zero, rather. Uh, and transform translate x of 100% to opacity of 1 to transform translate x of 0. There we go, as you can see. Mm, yeah. There we go. So, this is one of the problem as well. So, animation really does force your element to be exactly where its starting point is. But anyway, let's add it in here, which is pretty much the its base uh, stuff, I guess. So we have transform, translate x, 100%, opacity. So we're slowly getting to the problem I encountered before, but yeah. So now if I refresh, there we go, and voila. Voila. <laughs> As you can see, it's not elegant when we actually toggle it off and to actually like know 
visually that we're toggling it off let's animate the uh, button so the same with the button set the correct yeah. so button with the attribute of area expanded equals to true so we want to get this i it's the end first shell of i because we will, that is what will animate or whichever element that you want to animate really but yeah we still want to transform it and translate it so I can use animations here as well but I don't want to focus on the now part because really it's, it's a hassle to define key keyframes <laughs> but yeah transform rotate say 50 tag and check first how it looks there we go 60 and I guess 50 is good and tra uh, translate I, no, I guess I can move it using top uh, 30% 40% there we go and the uh, second child as well so just copy this Rotate this one negative 50 deg. There we go. Then top of 40%, I guess. There we go. If I check that, okay, it's much too far, too far at the top. Okay, that's better. So now if we check that, there we go. As you can see, a simple X animation. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty cool. And you can play with it around, around with it rather. So now to remove this kind of inelegant uh, nav bar, <laughs> and it's not overflowing as well. If you can check here, I go it's reducing. But yeah. Anyway, you can just add the keyframes of uh, slide right when it's data active of. False. So now this is where the problem will occur. But let's do it instead. Let's do it anyway. So of course, when it's going out, we want it to slide to the right, right? So it's right, right? Slide right. How do the mess is in out forwards? So pretty much an inver inverted version of this. Capacity. Uh, I guess I can just change this to two and this to from. And just copy paste it to be above. <laughs> Laziness one one right there. Okay. And yeah, there we go. We have a well, full working <laughs> stuff. What? The problem begins is when we load this, however it will not really happen because we didn't specify the attribute uh, on the load like right uh, here, oh, no, no. right here, unlike in react because it relies, uh, you do dynamic uh, if it's like this then this will be equal to false and stuff like that but <coughs> so if I reload this nothing really happens. But what if we specify the data active to false right here? There we go. As you can see, it's doing that thing right there. And that is because the animation is indeed running. And as I've mentioned before, animations will always force your element to start from which start specified or to the final property if you specify the direction to reverse I the fill mode to reverse rather not direction <coughs> but and to solve this because sometimes we aren't using plain html anymore and actually we want this to be readable like this entire html markup to be readable and we'll add all the let's say off uh, of state attributes or classes to the elements and uh, like 
have it appear only in the uh, browser <laughs> anyway to solve this uh, we can just remove all the animations and this is actually this actually saves you from uh, more code to write because keyframes are let's say kind of cumbersome to write <laughs> anyway and instead you can have this to transform translate x to another percent to zero and have for it to have an opacity of one and we will transfer this to this so now if I refresh it's not happening and if I do this it still works but Edron why is it doing that well we didn't specify the transition property so we can just say all oh, or so I will show you like a technique now if you want to use this because I also had problems before with uh, manipulating the durations for each separate property but here you go so for the transform property we want it to have a duration of 200 ms and is enough but for the opacity we want it to be kind of slower and still have the same one and in this case we can just say so we don't repeat ourselves transition timing function of this and that. We do that, there we go. It's doing fabulously. And if you want the transform to also be slower, then you can just say that as well. There we go. The transform is a lot slower and the opacity is much quicker. You can see it um, going out. And look at how much code it we have now compared to before with keyframes. <laughs> it's just like one, two, three four five six seven lines <coughs> of course when you do it like this in false like mm -hmm. this you need to add it in the HTML which I've said is good for readability and maintainability because like you will question yourself here like what <laughs> where's this <laughs> at first I guess <laughs> but if you don't want this so like you can always specify it in here anyway and I guess that's one thing to what well, that's one less code I guess but again readability but in that regard it's still going to work fine if you do it like that like if you remove the uh, selector for, for animation or CSS style yeah yeah CSS declar declaration for this element when it contains the attribute of data active equals to false so now we have a fully functioning nav bar. Hey, let me fix the transition to 350. Let me want this to be at 4, 5, 7, 2, 5. There we go. There we go. We have a nav bar. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. No, you should remember that this can still be overwritten, over overridden. Because right now we didn't specify the timing function here, that's why this can be applied. But if you say transform property to all, oh wait, what is it removed now? Wait, ah, transition, oops. Okay, I need to sleep. <laughs> and if you see it like that, then there we go. Wait. Uh -huh. yeah, this is actually kind of because we didn't specify any delay or something. <coughs> Wait, let me say duration instead of all so let's say we want it to be 1000 ms and there we go it's 1000 ms so everything that you write in here for the shorthand property can be overridden over over written. and if you say a comma of 200 ms will that work i don't know well, let's see 
Ah, oh, it works. But still, it's already there. <laughs> okay, that's interesting to know. But yeah. And if you don't specify your combo, I guess everything will be applied. Also, this will be applied to everything and stuff like that. Okay. And yeah, we have a functioning navbar for this first part, which took a lot, which took so long. And I can explain it in just a few minutes. But anyway, there is the first draft, I guess, of our code. And there's also the JavaScript API of Animate, which I will discuss on the next video. And right now, all we did was discuss basic CSS, vanilla, which is very helpful, about keyframes, animations, and transitions, I guess. Okay, I will style this up definitely, but yeah. And of course, the DOM manipulation, I guess. So it's called DOM manipulation for like, I don't know, uh, verbose kind of stuff, but I only call it, okay, I want to change the class. I want to <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, what you call DOM manipulation. You manipulate the DOM itself, like the elements itself. It's class name, it's attributes, and you get them, blah, blah, yada, yada. I think that's all and this is actually accessibility friendly so there's that and thank you for watching I will see you next time and thank you to my beautiful friend for giving me this idea I actually enjoy talking about animations and I think I will build a good website out of this <laughs> something to add to my portfolio but yeah anyway thank you for watching and I hope you learned something now my throat is dry I need to sleep and good luck on your developer journey. Good night, everybody. <laughs>